All right, I think we started. What is going on, guys, watching? We have Chris Gonzalez here, and we're going to be doing another coaching session on the Fitness Coaching Show, um, which is basically the title that we're using right now, which we just made up on the first episode. So welcome, Chris. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. So we just talked about this a little bit before we started the recording, but basically we're going to get down to what you've been struggling with, the time period that you've been struggling with that, and then we're going to understand with the deep reason that we're having this struggle, come up with some, some solutions and give you actions that you can start immediately helping you move forward. Cool? Sounds good. Awesome, man. Let's do it. So what's going on? What are you struggling with? Uh, really, it's a diet thing at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so starting January, I switched over to a keto diet and basically just to lose body fat. And it worked pretty well. Uh, so dropped like, God, 16 pounds in three months. Uh, but now I switched over because on a keto, it's hard to gain lean mass. Mm -hmm. So now I switched over to, you know, a standard diet, but I have, you know, it just switching has been different one because it's different eating and not used to that again. Um, but then I was starting to do research on things like carb cycling and stuff like that. And that's where my big questions are right now. So what are you trying to achieve? So what is the end goal for you right now? Uh, really, I want to probably gain about 10 pounds of lean mass and go from there. So gain 10 pounds of lean mass, so you're satisfied with the current body fat level that you're at? Uh, no, but that's kind of a secondary problem right now, so I'm not really worried about that so much. I like that prioritization. So let's start with the basics. First and foremost in gaining lean mass is your training plan. I'm sorry? Getting into a state where your body is saying, you know what, to support this workload, I better put on some more muscle so I can do it and do it consistently. Oh yeah, no, of course. So it's, like all about, it's all about the message that you're sending. So I know a lot of people know this, but it's true. If you really think about as you, as you leave each training session, what message did I send to my body in that training session? Did I give it a suggestion to change or did I tell my body I'm demanding you to adapt to this crazy workload in order to survive? So first and foremost, you have your training session, like five times more important than nutrition. But on the nutrition front, all you need to worry about is being in a caloric surplus, so eating more calories than you're burning, but not a caloric surplus to where you're gaining a ton of body fat, so 500 calories in a surplus, and then having adequate protein intake in mm-hmm. order to gain muscle mass. Yeah. And then the rest of the calories are made up by fat and carbohydrates. Right. And the struggle that you're talking about is how do we incorporate that and put it in real life so we're not hating our lives, right? Yeah. So right now I'm doing about a gram of protein per pound of body weight instead of lean mass. Perfect. And then I'm keeping my fat at about 65 to 70 grams per day and then filling in the rest with carbs. Now on my off, so the way I was considering doing it is on my non-training days, so the days I just do cardio, is to up my carbs so that way I build up my glycogen stores for my weight training days. Um, but I haven't really noticed a difference in workouts yet. So that's the thing. So, so why are you doing cardio at all at this point? Uh, just to keep that depth, because I don't want to gain too much fat mass uh, as I gain lean mass. So just to kind of you know offset that, the caloric increase there. So great distinction here. So think about cardio as just simply deducting calories. Yeah. So for, if you're not doing cardio to like, you know, keep up a, a certain cardiovascular endurance level or something like that, it's literally just deducting calories. So if you're worried about gaining too much body fat throughout this process, I would just make sure the caloric intake was mm-hmm. accurate, but I would eliminate cardio completely and you nailed it because when you're doing cardio, you're depleting glycogen stores, yeah, muscle fuel. So then when you go to do uh, workouts where you need to be demanding muscular change, you don't have as much muscle fuel. So immediately I would remove cardio and then adjust calories so we're not gaining a ton of body fat. Because all cardio is doing for you right now is giving you the opportunity to eat an extra two or 300 calories every day, but it's making you weaker in your weight performance, theoretically. And practically. No, no, that makes sense. Um, but then, like I was reading a couple studies and they were saying that the reason they do car- uh, like uh, carb cycling like that is because on your cardio days when you deplete your stores, then afterwards you're supposed to apparently take in the majority of your carbs after your aerobic workout to then kind of not really increase you know it's kind of like superstore so you know it you absorb more at that time than have it available for the next weight training at least that's what i 
Understood from what I read at least. Which is directly applicable for people trying to lose body fat. Yeah, gotcha. You're trying to lose body fat, you're trying to gain muscle mass. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so that makes perfect sense. So obviously you're depleting glycogen stores, it's completely suppressed. And then when you have a huge surplus of glycogen carbohydrates, boom, then you pump up, right, the most. When yeah. you're trying to lose body fat, that's why carb cycling is beneficial. But for you, if you're just trying to gain muscle mass, I'm telling you, it's all coming down to the workouts that you're doing and then making sure you're in caloric surplus and making sure protein is enough. So my first move for you, eliminate cardio and then adjust calories so you're not gaining too much body fat. Do you know okay. um, how many calories you need to eat right now in your life to not gain or lose weight? Do you know what that is? Uh, my BMR, I want to say, was 1850. I think just around there, I did it a few weeks ago. I haven't reweighed myself and done it recently. So I haven't adjusted in the past couple of weeks. So 1850, and for those you know, people that are watching, that's the amount of calories that you're burning at rest without you know, extra caloric burn through movement and exercise. So 1850, and then how much work are you accounting for each day? Uh, depends on the day. So weight training days, I typically do between three and 400, and then cardio days about two and three. So okay. I kept it into my meals at least, but. Okay. So, so say that one more time. So total, you, you said for what weight training? Uh, like three to 400. Three to 400. So then you're eating relatively like 2,300 calories a day. Yep. So have you found, cause there's a big distinction between doing the math and actually using it. Have you found that when you eat 2,300 calories a day, you're not gaining or losing weight? Uh, I'm basically, well, I, like I said, I haven't weighed myself in the past like two to three weeks, uh, but before then I was just maintaining. So I hadn't really changed a whole lot, um, but I also haven't done like a body comp. So I'm wondering if my body comp changed and just my weight didn't change. So this would be my suggestion in this area as well. Put this to the test for seven or 14 days mm -hmm. and see if this is actually your baseline caloric maintenance. Because if we're like, I, I personally have gone through this, right? Like read, read the stuff when I was a young guy, like read the stuff. I'm like, oh, if I eat this and eat this and do this workload, and I monitored it um, on a heart rate monitor to see how many calories I was burning, it didn't add up for me. It didn't re uh, my body didn't react in the way that I thought it was going to react. So there's a huge okay. difference between what we learn and then what's practical in our lives. So the way that you do that is have consistent workload, take out cardio completely, have a caloric intake amount, and weigh yourself every single day and do that for seven days or do it for 14 days and then draw a conclusion and have that be your caloric baseline. Well, fair enough. That makes sense. And then once you understand that and you're like, all right, I'm just lifting weights. I'm not doing cardio. This is my caloric baseline. Then boom, we're going to bump up three or 400 calories in surplus and make sure we're demanding a ton of muscular change on this side. And inevitably you will gain muscle mass. Fair enough. That it's, works. it's literally that easy. Like it's, the reason why it gets challenging is because there's so much, um, there's just so much information out there that we're reading. And like you were reading good, valuable information, but then you didn't piece together the context of the information and it set you off on a track. That yeah. You needed, right? yeah. That makes sense. So what do you think then on supplements? Because right now I don't really do, I just don't fit them in because protein, like protein shakes and everything are, I'd rather eat than drink a shake. So. <laughs> yeah. Good. So uh, go ahead. So what do you think of things like BCAAs and things like that? Because I've well read both ways. Like one says it will help and then others will say that doesn't make a difference as long as you're eating you know, enough protein in a day. Doesn't make a difference. Fair enough. It just doesn't. It makes a difference for people, I believe. And I don't even know if it does. I personally felt a difference when I was 4% body fat working out five hours a day. That's when I noticed a difference. But if you have enough body fat, right, and you're not working out for that long, I think BCAs are a waste of money. I really do. I think the main staples for the majority of us, even sub 10% body fat, is caloric intake and the demand we're putting on our body. When you're super lean, right, because the whole premise of BCAs is to have that overload of loose seam or preserving lean muscle mass, not being burnt, for, like all that stuff. But if we're not super duper lean, working out for a really, really long time, it doesn't matter. So I wouldn't lose my money at all. That makes sense, awesome. Okay. Uh, and then, so like right now I'm doing like three days a week of weight training. Would you do more than that? Or I figured because every session is almost whole body, but uh, they're kind of focused a little bit different. I hit every major body area in every workout, but then like one day I'll be more focused like upper body. One will be more focused like lower body. And then like today, this morning's was just 
a total body circuit, so. So, absolutely. So if you're really trying to gain muscle mass, you want to gain 10 pounds, minimum five days a week of lifting weights. Really? Yeah, because think about it, like you're doing full body, right? But what mm -hmm. message are you sending to your biceps to get bigger, or your chest to get bigger, or your legs to get bigger? Like individually, what message are you sending? If you're just training your whole body, maybe you hit, you know, a couple sets on your legs, a couple sets on the chest, a couple sets on the back, that's not enough for your body to change. Like you want to take a muscle and pin it. Right, so, and obviously when you're doing more, you're gonna be doing more muscle isolation, but like, mm -hmm. am I telling my bicep to get bigger? And just like, am I destroying my, is my bicep gonna say like, damn, I better get bigger, right? Or else I'm not gonna be able to handle this workload. And the person, Chris, is gonna die, right? Like that's what your body has to do. Think about yeah. what we're really trying to do. We're trying to convince our body like, look, if you don't grow muscles, I'll die, because I have to carry out this workload. So your body's like, oh God, I better allocate all of these calories, all of this energy to gaining excess muscle mass to handle a workload. So that message has to be so intense. So muscle isolation, compound movements, absolutely. Squat, bench, deadlift, things like that. But muscle isolation for sure. Send that message like bicep, you better grow. Or right. No, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Then, yeah, I'll probably have to adjust then and go try that out for a little bit. Um, yeah, because like right now what we do is we'll do it in, we kind of do like mesocycles, I guess they'd be concerned, like considered because they're month programs. So it's the same basic three weight training sessions that go over a week period. And then basically every week we'll increase and then we'll have a recovery week in between and then do a completely different workout for like the next four weeks and then go from there. But like I said, everything's kind of whole body opposed to focusing on one body part per workout. And, okay, so I'll have to try changing that and go from there. Yes, yeah, so I think we have like some good takeaways. So less full body workouts, increase the amount of working out you're doing to a minimum of five days a week, mm -hmm. eliminate cardio, and take seven to 14 days to, to find your baseline again, your caloric baseline. Yeah, no, definitely. That, that, that'll be awesome. I'm sure I'll have to change it. I'm, thinking it's going to have to change. <laughs> that's, big, that's like a lot of changes you got right now. Yeah, no, that is. It'll, it's going to take some time, but it'll be fun. So yeah, awesome. it's good. It's good. What else? What else do you feel like you have questions about? Oh God. Um, those were like the big ones I thought of before we started. I can't really. Yeah, it's okay. You have enough you yeah. have those actions, right? To... Oh, you have a lot of info actually that we went over. So no, that's, uh, those are some big ones. Um, I can't think of anything else. Like we do the sauna, but I enjoy it, so that's not an issue. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I can't think of anything else unless you have any suggestions. Those were like my big. The, those would be it. Um, so just recite those back to me. The three things that you know you have to do, and and just tell me about them. Oh, I should take notes on this stuff. I didn't know I was going to be tested. That's why I asked that question. Uh, it's okay. So obviously, I'm going to train. So I'm going to need to make a new program to isolate muscle groups each time. Uh, I'm going to have to track my body weight for 14 days so I can recalculate my BMR. And then, then do my caloric increase after that. But we'll see how that goes. So. Did you say cardio? Oh, no cardio. No cardio. It's good. Celebration. I hate it's cardio. Weird. Oh, weird. See, but I don't mind it. So that's not the <laughs> You can do it. You can do yeah. cardio. I just wouldn't do cardio, deplete glycogen stores, and then go into a weight training session. So if you're going to do cardio, yeah. directly replace the caloric burn with carbs. But yeah. Oh, but I don't do them the same day. So like cardio is on my off days. It just doesn't serve you. I yeah. guess it's not serving you at all. And it is potentially hurting you. But if you love it, that's like your choice, you know? Like, well, I love it so much. It's like, all right. Well, it's not like that. But I don't mind it. Like people, some people like loathe cardio, but it's... It's a plus or minus, so it's whatever. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah, definitely not serving you. So eliminating cardio, recalculating the amount of calories you have at baseline, five training sessions, a minimum per week, the muscle isolation. Dude, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. This was fun. No, thank you. That was awesome. Good, good. Do you, you feel served? No, definitely. Yes, I do. <laughs> great, great, man. All right, so for those of you that are watching this right now, I'm going to be posting this up. Chris, thank you so much for being a part of this. I'll see you soon. And check in with us because we want to hear if you've Oh, definitely, it. yeah. Awesome. All right. See you later. Awesome. Thanks again. We'll see you. Bye. Bye.